Now since today is primarily an insulation day, I want to debunk a little insulation myth. This is the perfect time to do it, so let's talk about it. I'm using rock wool insulation, mineral wool. Uh, most people use fiberglass. They're both very similar, so I'm going to be talking about them interchangeably. I've seen a lot of YouTubers and DIYers say on their channels, on YouTube, and on articles that if you compress insulation, it loses R value. And I want to prove to you guys that that is not the case, technically. So here is how this works. A lot of people think that insulation gains its R value, which is the amount of you know, resistance to heat transfer, you know, however it works. So it gains its R value through the ability to hold air. And what I've heard is that when you compress it, it can't hold air and therefore it loses R value. But that is the myth right there. And you can actually look this up online. And I'm gonna give you a little a guide of something to look up right here. Okay. Every insulation manufacturer has documents like this because it's used in building. People need this information so they know uh, how much R values and stuff they are gonna get by compressing their insulation. This is an R15 right now. So fully bulked out, three and a half inches thick. It's an R15. And that would come out to be about R4.3 per inch. So we're doing per inch now. Each inch of that insulation is, has an R value of 4.3. But what happens if I squeeze this instead of into a two by four wall, a two by three wall? So we're gonna compress it and we're gonna really shove it into our wall made of two by threes. Now we've compressed it. But guess what? The R value per inch, now that it's two and a half inches instead of three and a half, went up to 4.4. So 3.3 per inch. 4.4 per inch. We gained our value, but we lost overall insulating value because now we only have two and a half inches. So even though the R value per inch goes up, the overall inches goes down and the, they don't balance out. So you gain a little bit, but you lose an inch of insulation. So this would be R11, that would be R15. So say we take insulation for a two by six wall with rock wool, it's gonna be an R21. The R value per inch is 3.81. If we compress it into a two by four wall, we take away two inches. We just raise the R value from 3.8 up to 4.28 per inch. So it's a really interesting concept that actually compressing it increases the R value per inch. You just end up with less inches and that's why the R value goes down. And that's where the myth comes from because you do technically have less overall insulating ability, but it is, increased performance. Density is how we see some of these higher performance R values. You can see this is a lot more thick than fiberglass and a fiberglass insulation might be R13. This is R15 because it's denser. And even now you can buy dense packed, like dense fiberglass insulation. They increase the density to bring it up to R15 instead of the typical R11, R13. It's all about density. Just remember that the, the more you compress insulation to an extent, the higher the R value per inch. Recently, we rebuilt this whole back room on our house with all new framing. Everything is new in here. We got new rafters, new sheathing, new roof, new walls, everything. Everything is new. And as you can see, it's nice and bright and open. Even with this house wrap covering the windows, I love it. It's so much nicer in here and it feels so much cleaner in here. I did some final touches and finishing work in here. Let me show you what we got done. First thing you notice, we finished the house wrap on the outside of the house. That's good. Second thing, I finished up the above the wall here and I framed up that little triangular section, got insulation in there. Also finished insulating the roof. So the ceiling is fully insulated. We got our furring strips on the ceiling to bring it down just because this insulation was a little, little too thick for our, our uh, rafter bays. So I just wanted to make sure that we could put our wood ceiling up here without the insulation pushing too hard on it. And on this side of the room, I got sheathing on this wall also. So this wall is all done. So now we are ready for electrical and insulation. That's what I'm starting today. You can see down here, I got outlet boxes already installed of where I want my outlets to be. And I'm gonna get the wires run to them right now. After those are done, I'll be able to fill all these bays with insulation. And I wanted to tell you guys something really exciting. And that video is a long video we did redoing this whole room. I was disappointed because the walls weren't plumb. They leaned out because the original walls leaned out and the roof was done, you know, the whole thing. Well, after that video, 
I really gave it some thought, some deep thought, and I stared at it, and I didn't like how this was going. So I spent the entire day yesterday, the whole work day, focused on this wall alone, where I redid so much work. You wouldn't believe it. It doesn't look like it, but I did. And through the perseverance, I was able to get this wall plumb, plumb. We got a square corner. This wall was leaning out almost an inch at the top. And what I was able to do is it was actually a lot of work. Basically, I was able to shift the whole wall in. I had to cut some wood up here at the ceiling, uh, cut nails in my top plate, shift the wall, refix it. I got big lag bolts and everything holding it all together firmly. And the point is, I was able to get the walls square. The, uh, the soffit now is not straight, but I'd rather the soffit be crooked than the room inside the house be crooked. Boy, I had to do a lot of cutting, a lot of re-nailing. I had to pull all the nails out of the corner because I had the sheathing on there. It was a big mess, but I feel so much better now. And the reason I left it crooked was because I really thought it was going to be too much work to fix because I had that whole beam affixed and nailed in and strapped and all the rafters. And I thought there's no way I can deal with that. But like I said, it took me a whole day, but I, I was able to do it. So, good. This wall still bows out over on this end. So that's, that corner is perfect. Right here, it leans out a little. It's fine. I'm not going to mess with that because that goes into the old part of the house. And it's that's beyond what I can deal with right now. So, just wanted to give you the update on that. That we are perfect over here and everything's looking good. Electrical wiring is all complete. Now I can get the insulation in. You might notice I'm wearing my respirator. I told you guys previously that it was broke. I couldn't get it to run. It kept having error codes. Well, I finally think I figured it out. So I'm giving it a try today just so I don't have to breathe in all this insulation dust while I'm doing it. This insulation is not too bad to work with, but it gets me coughing and sneezing. So I'll try to avoid it. Now, let me just show you. I know this is going to be kind of irrelevant, but this is the unit. This is the blower and the filter. And the battery's right down here. So the battery pops off. You'll see these little connections right here. They touch the connections and the battery. Well, they were all clean, but after troubleshooting it and diagnosing it, I actually disassembled the whole unit and tested continuity from the outside to the inside. Well, what I discovered was these contacts, which are spring-loaded. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but they're, they, they push in. 
they were losing connection. There must be corrosion inside where the spring is. So I kept spraying it with contact cleaner and I kept just repeatedly pressing it to kind of use friction to rub away any kind of corrosion and now it seems to work. It's running the test right now. There it is, working properly. This shows me my airflow. This shows me my battery. So it all seems to be working fine. Just a poor connection at the battery contacts. So that saves me some money. We're gonna hook up, we're gonna get working, get the insulation in. Well guys, it feels awesome to get to this point where the whole room is insulated. Let's check it out. So we got it all around there. Coming around. And all around here. Behind the water heater. I also framed up a new header right here for the doorway going into the kitchen. Now I didn't capture the header being installed on video uh, it was a pretty basic framing, but now we have a nice square framed doorway. It's wider than the original door, shifted it over a couple inches, and it has a header. The original one did not have any header, so this is an upgrade. Now that ceiling, walls, everything's insulated, I'm going to go ahead with our rosin paper. It's just a general purpose building paper, and we're going to go over all the insulation with it. Now I've said before, this does help cut down on air infiltration especially when we do tongue groove ceilings. But more importantly, and the reason I do it, is because it cuts down on the dust. Tongue and groove boards are known for letting dust sift through them over the years, so we don't want any of this stuff sifting down, but also just installing it. When I'm in here nailing boards onto the walls and ceilings, the nail gun shoots a blast of air out with each fire, and it disrupts the insulation, it gets airborne, then I have to start coughing. I don't like that. So just for cleanliness and ease of working, we're gonna cover these walls up with paper.
Well, we got the whole room papered, except for right there, because it's really hard to get behind the water heater and washing machine. We'll get that later, but as you can see, the whole rest of the room is covered, and that makes it feel a lot cleaner in here. We don't have to worry about insulation, fibers, and it's just gonna be really nice. I can vacuum the floor, and we can start finishing work. So we got the electrical installed, we got the insulation in, we got the paper on the walls, and that's where it ends. We haven't made any more progress, so I'm gonna wrap it up now. Now that I've shared something, Ashley has something even cooler to share. We well, don't have to leave, get in here. <laughs> you guys might remember, unless you're new, that Ashley took up a hobby again of taking film pictures. Yep, with a real old style 35 millimeter camera like we used to do back in the day. And we did tell you guys that the next time she got a roll developed, we'd share the pictures with you. And I finally got it developed. First, I wanted to show you what camera I use because Last time I talked about this, we had some people asking, like, what camera do you have? And I got this on eBay. This is a Konica MT9. It's basically just a point and shoot, nothing special. Mm -hmm. Works good. I like it. Made in Japan. This roll I started probably in the springtime, I think, this year. So it's, it's a span of many months. Maverick and Bell holding big caterpillars that we had here. Most of these pictures are taken like in our yard. A lot of them have the pond in the background. Putting together a Lego set in the living room. Me and Maverick in front of the Festiva car before it was all ripped apart. And the gray car that we got. And then pictures of Maverick on the kayak. That was his first time on the water and he really enjoyed it. That was fun for him. He went out there with Belle. He did really good. up on the roof, doing the roof job. Trampoline. Pictures of Bell and Maverick in the woods here. So as you can see, pictures came out great. Ashley tries to capture highlights, just highlights. We don't go crazy with the pictures. Yeah. Important moments, memories. Like if I'm if we're doing something around here and it's like, oh this would make a good picture. I'll go grab the camera and take a picture. Mm-hmm. And I did sneak Ashley's camera out to get a shot of her. I know you guys said last time that Ashley needs to get in the shot more. 
I managed yeah. to get one shot of her. There it is. In the roll. Well, actually, you did take the one with me in front of the Festiva, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. So that's our pictures for this roll. Yep. 30, 36 exposures. The, the, roll, the, the rolls last a long time for us because, like I said, we don't take a lot of pictures. Ashley doesn't, but... Yep. Cool. We wanted to share them. Hope you guys enjoyed them. I think that's all we have for now. I have a lot of progress to make on the house. We got so much work coming, so I gotta get working. And we'll be back soon with another video. So until next time, Take care. See ya.